Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. I am Chad, the reseller Rockefeller. Today is December the 6th and uh, it's about 9.30 p.m. I'm actually uh, sitting in the office. I just got back from a trip. It took two weeks and uh, it was a fun trip. Got to go to multiple different places. We actually went up to Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, a little bit of Tennessee, and up in the panhandle of Florida. Went on a huge sourcing trip and found some really good items. Just made it back yesterday and I decided to upload a video today. First things first, uh, if you're new to the channel, I want to say uh, thank you for stopping by and watching a video. I am a full-time reseller. I've been buying and selling items for over 15 years. I deal in all kinds of stuff. I deal in antiques, collectibles, jewelry, electronics, gaming items, clothing items. You name it, I buy and sell it. As long as I can make money, I'm willing to buy it and I'm willing to sell it. And I love every minute of it. So, uh, you know, to all of you that are subscribed to the channel, thanks a lot for coming back and watching another video. Uh, but anyways, today's topic, we're actually going to be talking about can you actually make it as a full-time reseller if you don't sell clothing? That's the topic for today, and the only reason that that's the topic is I was on Facebook the other day, and I seen somebody ask the question, is it possible to actually make a successful living reselling without selling clothing. And I thought it was pretty comical and pretty funny just because my opinions, uh, you know, on clothing is that you have to sell quite a bit of it to actually make, you know, a substantial amount of money. It's really hard to just be in the clothing niche. Obviously, there is some really big companies out there that make millions and millions of dollars selling clothing. Uh, but for, you know, anybody that's like a stay-at-home business and, you know, you're just trying to do this as yourself, maybe you have one employee, maybe you've, you even have two employees, it's extremely hard to move that kind of inventory. You're going to have to sell quite a bit of clothing, especially if it's used clothing. It also takes a long time to source the items. Even though the items are readily available and pretty much at every yard sale, every flea market, every thrift store, and every Goodwill, it still is very hard to do. Uh, you know, recently, about two years ago, I started to get into clothing, and about a year and a half after I started to buy and sell clothing, I really started to see how hard clothing actually is when it comes down to making, you know, a substantial amount of money. And obviously, you know, my opinions on what a substantial amount of money is might be drastically different than what your opinion is. But for instance, you know, for me to make as much as I make now, I would have to sell, you know, 50 to 100 items of clothing every day, and I would have to average probably 15 to $20 an item. And that's just unreasonable. It just wouldn't work, especially seeing that I'm a one-man operation and I don't have any employees. Every now and then I do hire help. But, uh, you know, I looked at this Facebook post and I immediately thought to myself, you know, that this person is under the impression uh, that clothing is somehow the, the route that you have to take to be successful on uh, eBay or Amazon or even Etsy, Poshmark, uh, Macari. Uh, online reselling in general. Whoever this person was, I didn't, you know, I didn't bookmark her name. I didn't take a screenshot. Uh, but, you know, she is obviously under the impression that, you know, clothing is the go-to source to make money uh, as a reseller. And I think it's the complete opposite. If you pay attention to a lot of the clothing resellers that are on YouTube today, most of these resellers a year or two, even three years ago, uh, strictly only sold clothing and they were, uh, you know, making videos strictly about clothing. But if you pay attention to those videos and those channels, you will see that those same resellers uh, today in 2018 actually uh, expanded their business and are actually, you know, buying and selling other items because it's really hard to grow a clothing business into something that's really successful uh, and something that's, you know, making, you know, six figures plus uh, a year uh, net profit. So, I mean, to me, I believe, uh, and I've said this in plenty of videos, uh, you can check out all of my previous videos, go to my channel. I've said this before and you know I, I am a firm believer. 
I believe to be, you know, the most su successful as a reseller, you need to buy and sell, you know, kind of e anything and everything. You don't have to, you know, buy absolutely anything and everything, but you need to kind of know a lot about, you know, a little about a lot. I dip and dabble in pretty much anything. You know, I'm constantly learning about new items. I'm constantly buying stuff that I've never purchased before. And that's what keeps me going because I'm constantly building my knowledge and I'm always, you know, involving. I'm always making my business something more than it was the day before. And, uh, you know, I know tons of really successful resellers and pretty much all of the resellers that I know usually, uh, you know, do the same, you know, they have the same system. Uh, you know, they pretty much go out and they buy whatever they can find. And as long as they're making money on the item, it doesn't really matter. And that's where knowledge comes into play. And that's why I'm a firm believer on knowledge is king. You know, as a reseller, when you go to a, f a flea market or a thrift store or a garage sale, no matter where you go sourcing, if you have knowledge, you're going to be able to find items. The odds of you being able to find items is going to be increased by the amount of knowledge that you have. If you're stuck within one niche and you go to a garage sale or you go to a thrift store, you're going to have to stay within that niche. So say it's clothing. If you're at a garage sale, how many clothing items do you find typically at a garage sale? Not that many. Some garage sales might have a couple racks of clothing. They might have a sheet out with a couple hundred pieces. But, but when you really think about the majority of the items that you're going to see on any day going out and uh, actually going sourcing, unless you go to a clothing store, uh, you're not really going to stumble upon that much clothing and definitely not that much clothing that's actually worth buying. Lots of clothing uh, in the used market is, is kind of hit or miss. You find good items, uh, you know, but most of the stuff is garbage. Most of the stuff isn't worth reselling. So, you know, clothing is one of those niches, though, that I do know some people that are, you know, pretty successful. And it's because they've they've determined that that's the niche that they want to be in, and they kind of mastered the niche. You know, I have a really good friend of mine. He's actually in the New Orleans, uh, Louisiana area. He sells nothing but clothing, and he's super successful because he, you know, kind of figured out his own path within the clothing niche, and that makes him kind of uh, different than everybody else. He only sells really high-end vintage items and uh, like designer brands. He doesn't touch anything that's modern. He has standards and his entire eBay store, his entire Poshmark store and Etsy store is full of really, really high vintage clothing. And he does very, very good. Last time that we spoke was a few weeks ago and uh, we were talking about numbers, we were sharing stories, and he had told me something about uh, in the month of July, he did just over, I think it was like $340,000. Now that is a total of like three or four different platforms that he sells on, but that is a substantial amount of money per month, even though you're selling on numerous platforms. He only has about three or four employees, and you're talking about somebody that goes out and sources all of his items himself. He also buys off of eBay. He also buys uh, from other dealers and other resellers. But you're talking about one person that sources that much inventory. He is really a, uh, you know, he is a badass reseller. Uh, I, I, I hate to use uh, foul language, but this guy really knows what he's doing. He does have an uh, extremely good eye, and he has learned what it is that he's trying to find and what he's trying to buy. You know, and that's what I've said before in other videos as well. If you decide to go within a niche, for some reason, if you want to be in the electronics niche, then you really need to focus on electronics, and you need to become the best, and you need to kind of master that niche. I've always said that. I never said that you cannot be successful within one niche. I've always just stated that if you want the odds to be in your favor and you want to grow your business uh, much faster and you want to make more money, then open up your avenues of items. Make sure that you're sourcing uh, anything and everything. Start to 
you know, learn more about stuff, start to, you know, build your knowledge. And one of the best ways that I believe, uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine last night about this, and that's why it's fresh in my head. One of the best things that I do, honestly, is I go through eBay, I go through and look at the completed listings, and I literally spend uh, quite a bit of time studying you know, different items that recently sold. So if I'm looking at a, you know, a vintage sweatshirt and I see that it, it sold for 300, I usually uh, then will open up another uh, browser and I will look for vintage sweatshirts uh, that make, you know, that model or whatever, that brand. And I'll try to figure out why that sweatshirt sold for that much. And then I'll start just learning about all kinds of sweatshirts. What are the best ones to look for? Uh, you know, what are the best brands? And I'll do that with all kinds of items. The other night, I spent literally almost an hour uh, just researching vintage RC cars. I never really understood, you know, why some of these vintage RC cars sell for so much, but some of the older ones really do bring good money. And so I really spent a lot of time, you know, investigating why these cars sell for so much. And I also spent a lot of time learning all of the different models, all the different brands, uh, what to look for, what to stay away from. And that's how I build my knowledge. I'm constantly reading. I'm constantly looking at photos. I'm constantly checking, you know, sold listings. And I'm constantly building my knowledge on all kinds of stuff. I don't limit myself at all. And so when I'm out, you know, hitting yard sales and, you know, out sourcing, I literally, you know, find items all the time because I'm able to kind of, you know, once you see an item and you research an item, once you see that item again, it doesn't matter where you're at. You could be at a garage sale, you could be at an estate sale, a flea market, a, you know, a thrift store. Once you see the item, all of that information that you learned about that item is going to come pop right back in your head and you're going to be able to make a, a very good decision. You're going to know uh, what that item is worth in a roundabout rough estimate. You're going to know, you know what to look for, what not to look for, and it's just going to be natural. And the more you learn as you go along, the knowledge just builds and builds and builds and then eventually you're becoming uh you know an extremely successful reseller you're making uh, a successful living and you're knowledgeable enough to go and source anywhere at any time and make good decisions and buy items that are actually selling one of the big mistakes that i see so many resellers making is they try to pay attention to you know, items in general, you know, they try to think about items that are, uh, you know, good to buy, you know, say for instance, the vacuum cleaner, uh, some kind of, you know, vacuum cleaner sells at Walmart for $119 and you see it at a garage sale and it's, you know, $20. Most resellers only pay attention to the fact that it sells for $119 at Walmart and you can buy it for $20. That means you should be able to make money on the item. But people don't pay attention to the fact of you need to figure out if that item is actually selling. What if you go on Amazon or what if you go on eBay and that item hasn't even sold in the last 90 days? What if that item is just not popular because it has really bad reviews or it's a piece of crap and it doesn't work? You need to do more research other than just comparing what an item is is selling for at a garage sale and what does it sell for new. I know so many resellers that make that mistake when they first start out reselling. They only pay attention to what an item sells for retail and then how much they can buy the item for, you know, if they're out of the yard sale or, you know, a thrift store. And that's just not the way to go about it. So, I mean, to answer the question, can you actually be successful uh, and actually make a successful living uh, outside of just clothing? It's definitely a yes. I mean, there are so many resellers out there that make, you know, a really good successful living and they don't sell clothing at all. I like to sell clothing. It just depends on the item. And I definitely believe that, you know, my success is basically because I sell all kinds of items. Clothing, uh, uh, you know, accounts for a very small portion of my business, maybe even less than 5%. But I do sell clothing. I like clothing. It's easy. I find it cheap. I love to buy vintage items. I love to buy kind of really cool retro items. Uh, I love clothing. But I can't see myself 
within just the clothing niche. I feel like I would get burned out. I feel like it would just get old after a while. Uh, once I learned all of the brands and all of the different, you know, popular items, and I, you know, it just, it wouldn't satisfy my itch. You know, as a reseller and as somebody that owns a business, you know, you have to be motivated or else you're, you're gonna, you're just gonna kind of fall. You're never gonna be able to, you know, keep yourself motivated if you're just burnt out and unhappy and uh, not, you know, you have the ambition to, to achieve more. And so that's what always keeps me going is that I always, I'm always learning more and I'm always very eager to learn more. And so it keeps me motivated. Each and every day, I'm constantly trying to learn more, no matter what it's about. You know, I'm constantly trying to pick people's brains. I'm constantly trying to do research and I'm trying to learn more and more and more. And every time I go out and I go sourcing, I'm constantly surprising myself. So, you know, that question should have been answered. I want to say, uh, you know, thanks a lot for coming to the channel and watching another video. Sorry this video was short. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video, give kind of a channel update, let everybody know that I'm back to making videos. There's going to be a lot of content to come. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, make sure you hit the bell notification. And uh, for all of you that are subscribed to the channel, if you have any comments, questions, uh, anything at all, leave it down in the comment section. I am here to help people. I'm here to answer questions. Uh, if you don't want to leave a comment, you can always message me at resellerrockefeller at gmail.com. Until next time, folks, I'm out of here. Peace.